Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Easy 11 Plus live lesson. There's Dimitri on the cover image for this video looking exceptionally scholarly in his mortarboard hat. So here's Grigri to balance things out. Grigri is in no way a scholar. He's smart but he's not very into book learning. There's been some excellent action in the comments leading up to uh, this live lesson. Um, 11 Plus Grammar Rook was doing some creative writing, wrote Dimitri ran across the room. Grigri was chasing him at full speed. He was like a bullet train. But Dimitri was faster than an Asian kid when their mum gets out the belt. That made me laugh. That's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> My uh, mother-in-law is from Hong Kong, so um, definitely Asian. Her preference was uh, threatening people with kitchen, kitchen utensils, pans and that sort of thing. Um, I don't think belts were ever involved. Uh, what else? We had some riddling from, let's see if I can find it, uh, some riddling from um, Andre Ashiegbu. A man who was outside in the rain without an umbrella or hat didn't get a single hair on his head wet. Why? Andre followed up by saying, if you get this, you're a riddle legend, at which point pretty much everybody in the chat got it. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you the answer now, uh, see whether you can work it out. Okay, um, somebody has written, Hi Robert, you have very cute cats. Don't say my username. Okay. You know that everybody here can see your username, right? Everyone can see it. Um, right, anyway. Um, Olivia says, I really like your live lessons. I'm doing this so I pass my sats. Uh, I am truly honoured. I don't know how useful today's lesson will be directly for passing sats, but it will expand your mind and that will help with your sats work. I need to let Grigri out of the door because he's very impatient to leave. Grigri, how can you not want to stay here and learn? How can that be? Grigri does not want to stay here and learn. Um, I can't understand it. Right, this week we are looking at starting an essay. How you go about beginning your work and writing the first paragraph. And the task is to write the first paragraph only of an 11 plus exam essay based on each volume of the following two titles. So we got this one, today's children are less well prepared for adult life than past generations were. That's talking about you kids. Do you agree? And the next one is, do you believe that the UK should scrap its army, navy and air force and spend the money on schools and healthcare instead? Um, and uh, yeah. There you are. They're the two titles we're going to be looking at. Uh, some of you may already have had a go. It's just about the first paragraphs. Now, um, there are a few things I want to say about first paragraphs or introductions. And I'm going to use the term interchangeably here when I talk about an introduction. I mean the first paragraph. When I talk about a first paragraph, I mean the introduction. Now, there are no actual rules for writing essays. You really can do anything you want. But there are certain rules that I'm going to set out that I think you should follow if you want to write effective essays that will work reliably in an exam. And also this approach that I'm going to be talking about is the best way to start learning to write essays, again, in my opinion. And then once you've got a handle on this way of going about it, you then have a structure from which you can diverge. It's a bit like you learn to write poems that rhyme and have lines with the same numbers of syllables in, so that then you understand a bit of poetic structure which enables you to go away and do crazy stuff. But if you don't understand structure, you can't write good unstructured poetry. If you can't paint a good portrait, you're going to struggle to do good abstract painting. So when I talk about what you should do and shouldn't do, I'm not saying that this is the only way to write an essay. I'm saying that in my quite strong opinion, this is the best way to go about it initially, and this is the best way to go about it in an 11 plus exam. So you start off with a title. And the first title here is today's children are less well prepared for adult life than past generations were. Do you agree? Now that do you agree is immediately going to tempt you to do one of the things that I think you must, what well, you should not do. I think you should not do. And I'm going to say you must not do when you're writing an 11 plus exam essay, which is to start off by answering the question. If you answer the question in your opening paragraph, then you are likely to get stuck because then you're going to want to discuss both sides of the essay. But whenever you give the other point of view, your reader is going to go, but you don't agree with this. So why are you saying it? 
So you actually undermine the balance of your essay and it makes it very hard for you to argue both sides well if you've already said what you believe. Now again, this is not an absolute rule. People who are more skilled with essays can um, can say what they think at the beginning and still handle a balanced argument well. But it's difficult to do, it takes a bit of experience and so my very, very strong advice at the moment for all of your essays, however brilliantly smart you are, is that you write a neutral introduction which introduces the main arguments but does not give a personal opinion. Save the answer to the question, do you agree, for not the introduction, not the second paragraph, not the third, but the conclusion. And do not give away your own opinion until the end. And the conclusion is where you bring everything together and explain what your view is and why based on the things that you've said in the essay. So we are not going to give our own opinion in this introduction. Um, the other thing that people do a lot in their introductions to 11 plus essays is say, in this essay, I am going to consider both points of view and come to a reasoned conclusion. That doesn't mean anything. All it means is this is an essay. We know that it's an essay. So don't waste time writing anything that means this is an essay, this is going to be a balanced argument, I am going to conclude, I am going to consider both points of view. Do not say any of that, which might be mind-blowing for some of you, because I bet some of you have been taught to say these things. Um, but they have no place in an introduction, they're just words, and they waste time and they waste space, and they annoy the reader. The introduction is purely for outlining the main parameters of the points of view that you are going to discuss. And if that means that your introduction is very short, then that is a good outcome. Because that means you haven't wasted space and time on it and you can get into the meat of your essay. So I said I was gonna have strong opinions. They are my strong opinions about introductions. Now let's think about how we do it. So you might be tempted to start off by writing on the, let's get rid of this rubbish, on the one hand, blah, blah, blah. Why is that wrong? What is wrong with beginning with on the one hand? There's absolutely nothing wrong with beginning with on the one hand. But the problem is that you don't know what you think yet. You haven't planned your essay. And a good introduction emerges from a clear plan. And so when I said write the first paragraph only, what I didn't say, because I wanted you to have a chance to play with this and work it out for yourselves, is that the actual task is to come up with a plan and then write the first paragraph. And that's what we're gonna do. Mohammed, um, and I've got a lot of respect for this because most people are too scared to ask the really basic questions because they think they're too obvious and they look stupid. So this is very much a non-stupid question for Mohammed in the comments and a necessary one. Mohammed asks, what is an essay? Okay, so the word essay comes from um, from the idea of trying. That's where the word come from, comes from. It's a try, it's an attempt, but um, we don't use it in that way. It could be used loosely to mean a piece of writing to be assessed, and some people use it to include stories and so on. I don't like that. I don't think it's a very useful way of using the word. When I talk about an essay, I'm talking about a piece of discursive writing, which is another bit of technical language for it, uh, a discussion. So your title is a problem. In your essay, you consider the problem from two sides, ideally, and then you explain, based on your discussion, what your opinion is. So this is a classic essay title. It presents a point of view and then challenges you to agree or disagree with it. Or to partly agree, partly disagree. That's an essay, basically. So when I talk about an essay, I mean a written debate about a point in which you write from both sides. That is not the only different definition of an essay. If you look in the dictionary, you'll find a rather broader definition. But when I talk about an 11 plus essay, that's what I mean. Thank you very much for the question. I should have answered it uh, without anyone needing to ask me. So I really appreciate that. Thank you, Mohammed. Okay, so we're gonna come up with a very, very simple plan for this. The kind of simple plan that you might come up with in an exam. And what we want here, we want more or less 
four paragraphs and a conclusion. And if you add a short introduction to that, that's going to give us a good length of exam essay of about a page to a page and a half. Probably about a page and a half is ideal. It gives you a little bit more space to explore the ideas, but you don't want to go any longer than that because then you'll just be waffling and writing too quickly and not thinking about what you're saying. Um, and it's easiest if each paragraph is basically one point that's explored. Again, that is not a rule for essays. It's a very good rule to stick to when you're starting to learn to write essays because it keeps things simple and clear and it forces you to explore each point a bit to fill out a paragraph rather than just listing them. So I would say that for an essay like this, we want four points with an introduction and a conclusion. Now, there are two sides to this, aren't there? So we need to think about the question. Um, and because there are two sides to it, we're probably going to end up with two points on each side. So we need to take care that we choose the best points. And that's why planning is important, because if you write a really rubbish point, then you've used up one of your two points on one side of the essay. What's the question really saying? Today's children are less well prepared for adult life. Right, what's a child? Uh, so we just need to come up with some answers to these so we know what we're doing. For a child, it could mean someone who's two, it could mean someone who's 17. I am going to understand children to mean people who are more or less your age. I'm going to take it that way. It's a perfectly reasonable interpretation. I just need to know what I'm thinking about so that I'm clear and so that I'm consistent. If I'm jumping around between talking about babies and talking about older teenagers, the essay is going to feel very incoherent and inconsistent. So I'm going to focus on people like you, more or less. Are less well prepared for adult life. What does it mean to be well prepared for adult life? What is adult life? I don't know about anything about being prepared for adult life. I do YouTube videos. Um, but uh, your average adult is a very wise person who knows how to navigate their way through the world without making big mistakes, messing up their personal life, um, uh, losing their job. Uh, yes, what does it mean to be prepared for adult life? I don't really know very, very many adults like that. But the idea is that being prepared for adult life means having a certain set of skills so that when you have to be independent and make decisions without your parents to make them for you or to help you make them, you won't be completely lost. And, you know, you might know how to make an omelette. Uh, you might know how to, you might have some clue about what to do when your tax form comes in the post. Uh, you might be able to move in at university and make friends without panicking that your parents aren't there to um, give you a nice tea every time you come in, that kind of thing. Maybe you can work a computer and carry out tasks that have been given to you without necessarily knowing all the software that you need to use, all the apps. Or it could mean all manner of things. But you need to think about it before you start writing the essay, you'll be floundering. That's the kind of way in which I'm thinking about it. Less well prepared than past generations were. Now you really need to think about this or your essay will be all over the place. What does past generations mean? It could mean people from 4000 BC. They were past generations. But that doesn't present a very useful comparison. So I am going to interpret this to mean uh, people who are my sort of age, people who are maybe a bit older than me, my parents sort of age. I'm not going to go any further back than that. So I'm not going to be jumping around through history. I'm going to have a sense of generations that you have had some contact with and you can reasonably say some things about. Now, when we think about the structure of this, by the way, I know I'm waffling, but I think it's really important waffle. You have to understand why I'm doing what I do before I do it. I apologise that it's a little bit boring, but um, this isn't an interesting channel. This is an educational channel and education is tedious. Um, anyway, uh, this title gives you various options. So you could write half your essay about how today's children are well prepared. And you could write half the essay about how your parents were better prepared. The problem with that is that you may probably don't, you probably don't know that much really about what it was like to be a child for your parents. You've got snippets, but you don't really know a lot about it. Most of you, I would say. So you're going to struggle to say good and correct stuff on that side of the essay. And because your marker might well be about that age, they'll spot all the things that don't really sound right. There's another way you could structure this. You could basically have half the essay about how today's children are well prepared and half the essay about how today's children are not well prepared. So actually you focus the whole thing on today's children, people like you, but you still need to mention past generations as you go from time to time so that you are answering the exact question, so that you are making that comparison. But I think that is the better way round. 
So both halves of this essay, we're going to focus mainly on today's children, how they're well prepared, how they're less well prepared, and we'll just drop in the odd mention of past generations. Now you need to go through this thought process quickly, but you need to go through it before you plan, because you need to know what the parameters, what the outline of your essay is. Whether you're going to talk about what things were like in, you know, when really old people were born back in the 1980s, um, or whether you're going to be focusing on what things are like now and how you're well prepared and less well prepared. Okay? What I'm not going to do is work out what my conclusion is, because I am going to write this essay best if I don't know what my point of view is. So every point of view I present, I'm going to argue for it as though I really believe in it, and then at the end, when I've already written the essay, I'm then going to think, okay, what do I think? And then I'm going to write my conclusion. That is going to produce the best essay. So my advice is to plan the body of your essay, but not the conclusion. And don't include your own point of view in the plan. Don't even try to work out what your point of view is. Save it. Okay. So we're actually going to jot down some notes now. And you know what? Amazingly, for the first time since about last year, I've actually written some notes so that I wouldn't be floundering around in the dark. This is me working with planning. Can you imagine what it's like when I don't work with planning? It's already all over the place. So, first of all, let's agree with the statement in the question. So we'll talk about how we agree with it and then we'll challenge it. You can do it the other way around, but I think that's easiest. So we start off with what's here and we start by arguing for it. So for, you know what for means? It means I'm agreeing with this statement here that today's children, oops, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Um, today's children are less well prepared for adult life than past generations were. In other words, children today are badly prepared, are poorly prepared for adult life. Okay, so that's the for. I keep clicking on my streaming window when I should be clicking on my Word document. I'm all over the place. Uh, that's because I am so old. It's because I'm, I've been ill prepared for adult life, clearly. Right. So, what is the big one here? What do people say about children nowadays about how they're less well prepared? Yes, they say that they're stuck in their computers all the time. Yes, they say that they don't know how to interact in real life. They say all sorts of things, many of which are complete nonsense. But one thing I think that people say a lot, which I can argue because I don't think it's complete nonsense, is that your generation is very, very protected um, by their parents, in general. In general. Um, you're unlikely compared to previous generations to just be sent out into the street to play from when you come home from school until dinner time for example now there may well be people in this chat who have a different experience but i would say that as a generalization that has something to it i'm prepared to be wrong but i'm just taking it but i think now and therefore i can argue it so um um so less independent um Parents control more of lives, more protected, less freedom. I'm just jotting down notes. I'm not going to write about each of these things separately. I'm just jotting down some notes. This will be, these will be the rough parameters for a paragraph about this, okay? Um, whereas in, in the past, children had more independent, outside time. This is an enormous generalization. I know it's a massive generalization. I know you could point out thousands of examples to prove this wrong, um, uh, but I'm making a generalization. That's the generalization I'm going to present in my essay. In the other side of the essay, I'm going to criticize it, present a different point of view, okay? Um, and what's the other thing? Well, I spoke, about, people always talk about technology. Technology is quite easy to write about because there are lots of points that you can make. It's such an important part of your generation's lives that you spend a lot of time in front of screens, that that's a world that you're comfortable in. Um, again, I'm generalizing, generalizing, I know, but look, you're all sitting in front of a screen now. So uh, you're probably quite good examples. Excuse me, particularly nose. Um, so, you know, let's run with that. So what can we say about that? Um, how the thing is, you need to make sure that everything you say is focused on the title. So if you're going to talk about time in front of screens, it needs to clearly relate to being less well prepared for adult life than previous generations. Okay? You can't just go off on one about screens. It needs to be focused on the question. So, um, I'm saying so a lot. Oh, never mind. Who cares? Who cares? You care, but I don't. I'm not going to. I'm going to force myself not to care. 
So, um, yeah, the point about apps and machines is that they make things really easy. Maybe they make things too easy so that when life is less easy, you won't be prepared to face it. Let's argue that. You guys will be fine because you're all self-motivated people who are here and talking about Fortnite in the comments, but um, other people of your generation may not be. So, um, yeah, used to apps and, and tech in general. Um, tech slash machines making everything easy. Um, how will you cope when, um, when not sure how to do things um, with tech or in the rest of life? These are notes, these are just notes. They don't need to be grammatical. Um, they just need to be for me writing this essay. Okay, so now I've got two paragraphs that I think I can argue. Um, um, oh, I'm gonna make a contrast with previous generation Whereas, um, um, older gens, let's focus on people who were kind of growing up around, you know, 90s, whatever, uh, 80s, 90s, that kind of thing. So whereas older gens um, had uh, less, I was going to say ergonomic, but that's a bit of a, you know, a bit of a fancy word. Whereas older gens had uh, less refined and had to work out how to do stuff. I mean, this I think is true. I mean, when I was, uh, I'm going to reveal my age, but when I was, you know, when I was your age in the, um, in the mid nineties and I was getting used to, you know, the first, uh, first computers and so on. Um, I spent a lot of time doing kind of basic, very basic sort of programming tasks just to get stuff done that I wanted to get done. And that's not really part of the life of people your age who use computers nowadays, I think. Um, it's a different world. Everything's very well designed, very, very smooth. And it's very difficult to get behind the uh, user interface and actually customize things and fiddle with things. It's relatively difficult. Uh, just as with cars nowadays, it's very difficult to, to tinker with them because of all the electronics and all the computer systems that are involved. Okay, um, so I've got plenty I can say there. What about against? By the way, all this planning process, by the time you're skilled, you're gonna do everything that we've done here. You're gonna do it in about three minutes in an exam, I think. Um, analyze the question understand it, get a couple of good points on each side, boom, you're ready to go. And you're not gonna write notes in this much detail. I'm writing these so they're clear for you looking back at them. You wouldn't write so much when you were planning in an exam, but you might when you're practicing. Uh, so on the other side, well, the best way, okay, here's another really important tip for writing an essay like this. So pay attention. If you've been talking about Fortnite, come back into the moment, listen to this, and then go back to talking about Fortnite. You could give two different points against but then that wouldn't really disprove anything in the foresight. I wouldn't try to disprove it. So you're just left with some points for, some points against, and it's a bit of a toss up which you choose in the end. The best way to structure a for and against essay is if your against points relate to the four points. So how can we argue that children being less independent and parents controlling more of their lives, being more protected, having less freedom might actually make them better prepared for adult life? Can we make that argument? If the answer is no, that would be stupid, then make a different argument. But if there is a good argument to be made on the other side of that same point, then let's make it. By the way, uh, just for people who are worrying, I'm not gonna do the second essay in this lesson. I'm just gonna do this one and this introduction uh, so that it doesn't run along, become long, so don't worry. Um, um, I've got a really good question from Manazi Das in the comments. It's such a good question, I just wanna pop out and answer it. Uh, Manazi asks, um, do you need equal amounts, equal amounts of factual information on each side to make it a better essay? So, broadly speaking, yes. But factual information doesn't need to mean statistics and, you know, sort of Googleable facts. Because you're in an exam, you can't do that kind of research. It means examples, it means case studies, it means specific situations that you can talk about. So it's more about your ability to come up with good examples than it's about your ability to know that 72% of children have never used a programming language, okay? Um, I mean, it's made up nonsense, but whatever, but, um, you know. So yes, but it's about your ability to come up with examples. And that's kind of what I've been doing here. I've been thinking through the issues 
and checking that I have enough to say about them. And I know I'll have enough, as you put it, facts for these points because I have plenty of thoughts about them and that will be enough. What you don't need to do is list all your facts, as it were, in your planning because you don't have time for that in an exam. You need to go on and write and you need to be doing all this in an absolute maximum of five minutes, I would say. Okay, the again. So I said we need to argue the same points. How can parents controlling your lives help to prepare you for adulthood? Well, I think there's a really obvious point to be made here which is that the more exposure to your parents and your parents' ideas and the, you have, and the more time you spend with your parents, the more exposure you have to their experience, to their, I'm trying to say this with a straight face, to their wisdom. Um, and maybe that will benefit you in adult life. I mean, it depends how good your parents are. It depends how good they are communicating with you. Frankly, it depends whether their lives are defined by a concatenation of terrible and foolish decisions. But those things, you know, if that isn't the case, um, more time spent with them, may um, actually mean that you benefit from that and you learn from them. So, um, greater parental input equals more chance to learn from their experience slash wisdom. Okay, more chance to learn from their experience slash wisdom. Great, uh, that's fine. Um, I'm going to flesh that out in the argument. <clears throat> easy to give examples for this, right? Because you can talk about the kinds of things that you'll only learn about through spending more time with your parents, through having conversations with them, through watching the way that they conduct themselves in their lives. Um, I don't really envy people who are parents, I'm not, um, because they're constantly being observed by these small beings who watch and learn and remember and hold things against them in the future. Um, the only small beings who watch me are Dimitri and Grigri, and um, frankly, I think all the things I do just baffle them. Um, I don't think they learn a great deal from them, apart from what time I put food out. Okay, what about the apps and tech machines making everything easy? How will you cope? We're not sure how to do things. Older generations had less refined technology and had to work out how to do stuff. Well, I think that's, to be honest, it's going to be unfair to some of you who are absolute computer whizzes and much better than me, but I think there's something to this as well. Is that fair? I think there might be. How can we argue against it? Well, for one thing, we can say the whole world is filling up with smart machines and they're just going to get smarter and they're going to do more. So how useful will those, as it were, handy skills be in the future? Will you really need to ferret around, um, <clears throat> to ferret around in, you know, MS-DOS or whatever? Um, is that going to have any relevance when it comes down to it? Will you even need to know where the command prompt is? Will you need to know how to change the oil on your car? Um, quite possibly not. So, um, um, in a smarter world, I'm using smarter in the sense of smart technology, um, handy skills will matter less. Um, okay. But that's going to be a fairly simple point to make. It's not going to be that stunning. Let's make a positive point about how you spend so much time on apps. You're more connected to each other. Um, and that means you've got, you've got a background and experience in networking with people all over the world, chatting to people on social media. Maybe you've got more potential to improve the world together. I think that's a load of rubbish. I don't think that connecting people together better makes them any wiser or any more likely to solve problems, sadly, because humans are in general stupid. But um, it would be nice to think that, and you can certainly argue it. Um, so more um, time on social apps means international and cross-cultural connections. equipped to come and solve big problems. Okay, so we got a couple of points there, but I think we can mesh them together. It's not really one point, but I think and even, even if we need to spread this across two paragraphs, that's fine. So we got the for and we got the against. Now this whole task was about writing a first paragraph. We haven't done that yet, but writing a first paragraph is going to be very simple because what we're not going to do, we're not going to say in this essay, I am going to look at both points of view and explain my own opinion because all that means is this is an essay and we're not going to do that even though some 
not very good. English teachers will tell you to do that. You should nod and smile and then ignore them. Um, also, we are not going to give our opinion because that makes it hard to argue both sides fairly. We're going to save our opinion for the end. So bearing in mind that we're not going to say this is an essay and we're not going to give our opinion and we're not going to write the whole essay in the introduction, what's left to do? Just outline these main points that we're going to talk about. And we're going to do it nice and simply and clearly. Don't go for fancy, go for clear and communicative. By the way, we're coming, oh, actually drawing towards the end here. I'm going to write this introduction. And then I'm going to tip of the week and I'm going to take a few questions if they're there. And then you're free. You're probably going to be free in about 10 minutes, people. OK, so um, what are you going to do here? So let's focus on the criticism of young people. Um, and let's make it at least a little bit interesting. Let's think of it from the point, who says that young people are rubbish? Apart from me, apart from me. I, obviously, I say all the time that young people are rubbish. You know that. Um, that's why I come here when you even talk to you, just to make you feel bad. But why do other people say that young people today are rubbish? Um, well, how do they say it? Who says it? Who says it? Um, uh, it's often older people, isn't it? Um, so let's run with that. Um, people from older generations sometimes let's not say always or in any generalization like that sometimes look on today's children with despair okay i like short sentences so let's not say with despair comma worrying let's start a new sentence they short sentence is good in an introduction it sets up a nice clear opening and it gives the reader confidence that you're going to talk to them in a clear understandable way. They worry that, so now, they we're going to focus on outlining very briefly some of the main points we're going to be covering. We're not going to make the points in full, we're not going to explore them, we're not going to give examples, we're just going to do it briefly. They worry that young people are decreasingly, opposite of increasingly, getting less. Young people are decreasingly independent. Oh, by the way, I haven't this is not something I wrote beforehand, I'm just making this up, that's why it's rubbish. They worry that young people are decreasingly independent. Um, no, that's awkward. Are ever more dependent on their parents. By the way, dependent with ENT is an adjective, and that is the spelling you will almost always use. Dependent ANT is a noun if somebody is a dependent of somebody else. That's very rare. Dependent is almost always ENT. The way that young people are ever more dependent on their parents, which means that they do not develop, um, they do not develop, um, an independent um, mindset and the ability to confront problems alone. Now we do not need to outline all the issues that we've presented here. If we present the main issue on each side, that is going to be great. I think this is my main issue on the my main point on the four side. What's my main point on the other side. Um, oh no, actually let's mention the other one briefly. Um, they also worry that computer technology, that um, that phone apps are so simple to use that children are not prepared for the more, for the more complex technology they may encounter at university and in the workplace. Okay, so this is one side of the argument. People from the generation sometimes look on today's children with despair. They worry that young people are ever more dependent on their parents, which means they do not develop an independent mindset and the ability to confront problems alone. They also worry that phone apps are so simple to use that children are not prepared for the more complex technology they may encounter in the workplace. On the other hand, um, it can be argued. So notice I'm using phrases like it can be argued and they worry that to put a little bit of distance between me and these points of view. I'm going to argue them well. I'm going to argue them as strongly as I can, very fairly on both sides. 
but I'm going to keep a distance with those phrases so that I never fall into the trap of saying I think this, when perhaps I don't, when perhaps that isn't the point of view I'll take in the conclusion. On the other hand, it can be argued, no it could be argued, let's go with that, moving even more distance, it could be argued that, that could be argued that, scroll down a little bit, um, children today have unprecedented exposure to their parents' knowledge and wisdom. Any parents watching this? Knowledge and wisdom. That's what you have. I know it. You made these children who turn up on Tuesday evenings to watch YouTube videos about writing essays. You're pretty much the cream of the crop of parents, although that may not be saying much for parents in general. On the other hand, it could be argued that children today have unprecedented exposure to their parents' knowledge and wisdom, um, from which they are likely to to learn. From which they are likely to learn. That's a very, it's a very grand construction. From which, from which they are likely to learn. Um, um, Furthermore, so I said I was going to write a very short intro. It's actually become fairly long, but that's okay because I've done some of the work from the rest of the essay by outlining the points this clearly. Um, I'm not going to say all the stuff about... Um, yeah, furthermore, it's... It's debatable how important... Um, handy skills... I'm putting that in inverted commas because it's a very loose term. Uh, but it's also the clearest way, I think, to... So if I said manual skills, I'm a bit limited. It would imply, you know, specifically repairing a car. I mean it more broadly, including with computers and so on. It's debatable how important handy skills will be uh, in the coming... It's debatable how important handy skills will... Let's emphasise that a bit. Will actually be in the coming decades. Um... The simple apps of today may, in fact, be an ideal preparation for the future. Okay, now that's plenty long enough for an introduction. And it's purely focused on the issues. People from older generations sometimes look on today's children with despair. They worry that young people are ever more dependent on their parents, which means they do not develop an independent mindset and the ability to confront problems alone. Um, they also worry that phone apps are so simple to use that children are not prepared for the more complex technology they may encounter at university and the workplace. On the other hand, it could be argued that children today have unprecedented exposure to their parents' knowledge and wisdom from which they are likely to learn. Furthermore, it's debatable how important handy skills will actually be in, let's say, in the coming decades, just a little bit more elegant. The simple apps of today may in fact be an ideal preparation for the future. Right, so now we've outlined the main points, so you're not going to need to repeat all this. This will help you when you start each point to get right into it, because you already outlined the main parameters of it. I'm going to do one more thing with this. Let's say that you didn't want to write an introduction that was quite this long, because it's an exam and you've got limited time. Um, how could we edit this down a little bit? Are ever more dependent on their parents? Um, okay. So now what I'm going to do, now I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to massacre the copy. Okay, it's going to get, this is going to get butchered. Um, and I'm sure that seeing me destroy my own work will give you intense pleasure because you're like that, I know. Okay. So there were young people, um, I'm clicking on the wrong screen again. Robert, you're a fool. Um, Hindering there. Hindering means l limiting, um, getting in the way of. Hindering our ability to confront problems alone. Um, and that simple phone apps do not prepare them for workplace. Yeah, I like this better because it's more concise for an introduction. Okay, so I think I was actually... Uh, admitting you're wrong is a very important life skill. I think I was a bit wrong to make this so complicated. I think this is working better as an introduction to an 11 plus essay. The worthy young people are ever more dependent on their parents, hindering their ability to confront problems alone, and that simple phone apps do not prepare them for workplace technology. On the other hand, it could be argued that children today 
um, have more chances, let's keep it simple, to learn from their parents' knowledge through spending more time with them. I know, I, 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 I do very much appreciate, by the way, um, uh, and this is not just theoretical knowledge, that um, there will be people watching this who come from very difficult home environments, whose parents do not spend a lot of time with them or set a particularly good example. I'm not implying that this is your life. I'm making a generalization about some families, many families perhaps, um, but I'm not trying to say anything specific about you. Um, the nature of a task like this is that you are forced to generalize a bit. It could have more chance to le learn from their parents' knowledge through spending more time with them. Um, it's more, it's debatable how important handy skills will actually be in the um, coming decades. And we can get rid of this. There we are. So that's a simpler version of the introduction, simpler and shorter, and probably better fitted to the beginning of an 11 plus essay. And it doesn't say what I think. It doesn't say this is an essay. And um, it keeps a little bit of distance by talking about other people's points of view. They worry that. Um, and using phrases like it could be argued, which leaves me completely free to argue both sides and reach a conclusion afterwards. And to repeat one thing that I said earlier, I would strongly suggest that you don't even decide in your own mind what your own opinion is at this stage. You will write best if you write as though each point you're arguing is something that you believe. And then at the end of the essay, when you've outlined your points, then think, okay, having written that, having made these points, what, what point of view have I mo made most convincingly that you can then argue in your conclusion? But we're not talking about conclusions today, we're talking about introductions. And we've written an introduction here, we've got two versions, we've got a longer, more involved version, we've got a simpler, more concise version, and I think they're both fine. And they give a sense of what I, I look for when I'm assessing um, young people's 11 plus essays. Okay, you've been absolutely brilliant. Um, let's quickly jump to the tip of the week. <laughs> This is the point when I think, oops, I need to come up with a tip of the week. No, fortunately I did think of something. It's nothing that I haven't said before. Um, whatever you're doing, whatever kind of exam you're doing, it's very important that you develop writing skills. Even if all your exams are going to be multiple choice, uh, firstly, you're not going to be well prepared to understand and think about text in detail if you don't have a sense of writing text yourself. And secondly, it's going to be absolutely essential when you go to secondary school. So you need to be developing your writing skills so that you aren't left behind by the people who have been practicing writing for the 11 plus. But writing doesn't just mean writing an essay like this or writing a whole story or whatever. And the main bit of advice I want to give you today is make sure that you're doing some writing frequently. And that includes writing very short tasks. It can be very useful just to practice writing introductions to a number of essay titles and not even bothering writing the rest of the essay unless you know a teacher has told you to or a parent or someone important and wise of that nature. It can be really, really useful to write the two sentence beginning of a story in lots of different ways. It can be very valuable to write one paragraph descriptions of a photo rather than turning it into a whole story. So my tip of the week this week is write a little bit often. And that can be more useful than writing a lot, only occasionally. Anything coming in in the... In the questions, this is where I'm thinking, please don't ask any questions, please don't ask any questions, I want to be able to go away, but I love your questions. A parish says, is this good? It's brilliant. I don't know what parish is asking about, but yeah, it's brilliant. Good, I can answer that one. Um, ah, Tops A has a, has a really good question. Um, it's quite a funny question, but it's a, it's a sincerely meant one and worth answering. When you do your opinion at the end, do you say offensive things about the side you disagree with, or do you just say, without being biased, I think? It's a really good question. Uh, offensive things would mean, the other people are fools. That would be offensive. No, of course you shouldn't say that, but I don't think that's what you mean. What you mean is, should you focus on saying why the other side is wrong? 
Um, yeah, that's fine. I think you're bringing together all the points in your essay. So what you're really doing is explaining why one thing is stronger than another thing. You don't need to absolutely destroy the other argument to do that. Um, so uh, if we just pop this back up for a second. Um, um, you could, for example, say, although it's impossible to know whether critics of today's children are correct, it seems likely that the benefits of their lifestyle are at least as strong as the disadvantages. Um, um, and, you know, you could just briefly say why. So there I've criticised the other point of view uh, in the sense that I've said they might be right, but probably not. And that's the kind of way that I would advise going about it. Um, as soon as you start saying that points of view are stupid or completely wrong, um, you're kind of, you're rather undermining, undermining your own essay because you actually pointed out in your essay all the ways that that point of view was reasonable and could be argued. Uh, so yeah, uh, definitely you don't have to be offensive, but also uh, it's better just to be balanced and, and a little bit detached in the way you talk about things. Um, Tony Johnson says, are notes actually helpful? Notes are essential, um, I, but you don't need to write in as much detail as I have here. So whereas um, my planning notes here, uh, we're looking at this here, quite long. I don't think you have time to write all that in the exam, but I would write less independent parent, less independent parental control. So that part of this might be the bit that I write in the exam. I can remember the rest because I've thought about it. Um, um, so I might write apps, make make everything easy. How will they cope? That'd be my note for the second one. Um, this is already pretty short. I could write that in an exam, to be honest. Um, and uh, so I might write this in a smarter world, handy skills matter less. And I might just write um, apps mean connections. And that will remind me about that point. So uh, it's going to, the same process, but I'm going to rely more on remembering the main outline of my points and just putting a quick note. But yes, I, you definitely should note a, a, an overall structure for your essay. I would strongly recommend that. Uh, someone who does that will almost always write a better essay than somebody who just plunges in and makes it up as they go along. You can almost always tell when someone's done that and not in a good way. Uh, really good question. Thank you. Um, what does gen mean? It probably means generation, um, I would say. Uh, the questions. Is the talk about Fortnite getting annoying? I didn't really notice it. I noticed the word Fortnite occasionally, but I didn't really pay attention. Uh, to be honest, I, I just find all of you so annoying. That doesn't really make, different, make any difference what you write, honestly. What if you can't think of more than one point? You need to think about the title more. So I started off by... I'm still in this thing. I'm just going to go back into the general screen. That's it. I you want to see my beautiful face. Uh, I started off by discussing the title and looking at each part of it and thinking, what do I understand by this? I think when you go through that process, you're likely to come up with enough ideas through thinking about it, and that will get you going. Um, that's also a matter of practice. You practice doing that, and you practice coming up with ideas. It isn't something we're born with. It's something that we learn, and you will learn it through practicing it. And I think what I've done here is shown you a way to go about practicing it. I hope so. Um, boo -doo -boo -doo -boo -doo -boo -doo -boo. Uh, it's about about the general knowledge, the 11 plus in general. Uh, I mean, you've outlined you've outlined the subjects that will be tested. Um, it's just that you need the knowledge in general to do those things well. So you do need a certain amount of general knowledge to do good, good creative writing, because otherwise, what are you going to write about? Um, and you need a little bit of context for some, you know, mass questions and so on. Um, all knowledge informs all knowledge to a certain extent. Uh, but you've you've summarised what the syllabus areas are there. They are they are the things that you need to concentrate on for the eleven plus. Uh, Nicka says, "Why is slow mode on? To stop people like you spamming the comments. Slow mode is hardly terrible. It just means you can only post every twenty seconds. There are three posts a minute that you can write. If you wrote more than that, you would be spamming. Spamming. So slow mode just stops outrageous spam from people like you. Okay, I am going to call it a day there." Uh, because you want to go, I want to go, I've gone on for longer than I said, as I often do, and yes, there is more to life than easy 11 plus lessons, hard as that may be to believe. All right, wonderful to see you, 
I will see you next Tuesday evening at six o'clock. Don't forget that you could send me a piece of work for completely free marking and feedback, including videos like this, but addressed to you. Uh, you can find more information in the video description. All right, everybody, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, thank you for some really great input. I've really appreciated it. And um, oh, by the way, the answer to the riddle is uh, he's bald, I think. <laughs>